I would like to share some principles with you that come from the latest medical research that are important not only in recovering from any disease, but also to prevent disease and live in divine health. As I share with you new information coming from latest medical research, I'm also going to be briefly summarizing the core principles that I've shared with you throughout this DVD series. Hopefully you will see that all the pieces of the puzzle come together into one big picture. It is amazing to see how these principles from medical research tie in with what I've been sharing with you from the Bible over the last few sessions. Much of what has been proven in medical science today is what the Bible said about disease thousands of years ago. At the beginning of session 2 I told you that in the latest cutting-edge medical research 87% of all diseases have been traced back to what goes on in our thought life. Unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, rejection, anger, rage, resentment, jealousy, envy, perfectionism, drivenness to perform, a low self-esteem, self-hatred, guilt and condemnation are toxic thinking habits that have been identified that cause most disease known to mankind. When these toxic thinking patterns are dominating in your thought life, you are building toxic memories, which we call thorn trees in your brain, that are making you sick. These principles that I'm going to share with you in these last two sessions are based on how the brain works and are what medical science is saying is needed to detox your brain. In other words, they will help you to break down those toxic thorn trees in your brain that are making you sick. You don't have to suffer from disease, you can defeat it. No disease is incurable when God's conditions for healing are met. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can renew your mind and break the chains that have been limiting your development into the victorious overcomer that God created you to be. Once again, you will notice that these principles from medical research are actually biblical principles as well. The first principle is control your thought life. This is the most important principle. If you don't control your thought life, then nothing else I share with you is going to work for you. The only way you are going to control your thought life is by submitting your thought life to Christ. I've quoted the scripture over and over again because it is a key part of the teaching in this DVD series and that's 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 Bring every thought captive under the obedience of Christ. According to the latest medical research controlling your thought life is the most effective way to treat disease and heal your brain and body. According to the Word of God, which is more accurate than medical science, the quality of your health is brought about by the quality of your thinking. To the extent that your soul, which is your mind, will and emotions prospers, so your health will prosper. Remember 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Well, how do you control your thought life? Well, firstly, if you can understand how your brain works and how thoughts form, it will greatly help you in controlling your thought life. I explained in detail how thoughts form and how memory is built in your brain in session 2. Let's quickly recap session 2 in 5 minutes. Information comes into your brain through your five senses. 
For example, the information from what you see and hear comes into your brain in the form of light waves and sound waves, which is then converted into an electrical current. That electrical current then travels along the nerves in your brain, and now the information is in the form of a thought. Your thoughts are not something that is out there. They are physically in your brain in the form of millions of chemical reactions and um, electrical current that travels along the nerves in your brain. So your mind and your thoughts are physically in your brain. Remember, information or thoughts don't only come into your mind from the external world through your five senses. Where else can thoughts come from? Remember what I shared with you in session 11. Who taught you? Who taught you to be fearful and anxious? Who taught you to be bitter and have unforgiveness? Who taught you to have a low self-esteem and to hate yourself? Who taught you? You were taught from within by the devil and the invisible kingdom of Ephesians chapter 6. Jesus said that from within, from the heart of man proceed evil thoughts. So thoughts can also come from within. The Holy Spirit and also the devil and his kingdom can communicate with your human spirit and your soul which is your mind through theta brainwave activity. So your thoughts can come from the external world through your five senses or from within from the spirit world through theta brainwave activity. Once that thought enters your mind and it travels through your brain in the form of an electrical current, it travels through various areas until it reaches your free will. The free will is physically located in the front part of the corpus callosum, which is the sausage-shaped area circled in green. At the free will is where you decide to accept or reject a thought. Now the Holy Spirit speaks to us through our heart brain and advises your free will what to do. If it is a good thought, for example from the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will advise you to meditate on that thought because it is good for you. If it is a toxic sinful thought, the Holy Spirit will advise you to reject it. So your free will is advised by the heart brain on what is the right thing to do with that thought, but it is still ultimately your free will's choice. If you make a decision of your free will to reject that thought before you meditate on it, that information will literally become hot air. Therefore, that thought does not penetrate your mind and brain any further. The corpus callosum, that sausage-shaped area circled in green, is your thinker. You use your corpus callosum to think. The corpus callosum is activated under the direction of your free will. So if you make a decision of your free will to accept that thought and to meditate on it, immediately your corpus callosum will shift into high gear and will start to think. As the corpus callosum is meditating on these thoughts, chemicals carrying that information shoot into the trees of the mind which is situated in the cortex of your brain and you begin to build memory. Remember I explained to you that you build memory by growing branches on the nerves. The more you meditate on that thought, the more branches you will grow on that memory and the stronger that memory will become. The picture on the screen that you are looking at is a real picture of the brain. You are looking at the brain from a side view. The dark patch is a strong memory. It is a nerve with lots of branches. If it is a good memory, for example one that was built from meditating on the word, it looks like a lush tree, which is now shown in the picture on the left. That is also a real picture of the brain from a different view. When you meditate on that scripture or those thoughts again in the future, an electromagnetic wave which we call the breeze through the trees will reactivate those lush trees which will then secrete chemicals that are healthy for you. Good memories look different to bad toxic memories. A bad memory that was built from toxic thinking such as bitterness, anger, fear, anxiety, worry, self-hatred, etc. looks like a thorn tree and it has a darker, heavier magnetic field around it. That is illustrated in the picture on the left. When you meditate on those toxic thoughts again in the future, the breeze through the trees will reactivate those thorn trees, which will then secrete toxic chemicals that make you sick. 
So that's a brief summary of how a thought forms and becomes a memory in your brain. When you have a clear knowledge of how the brain works and can visualize it, you can capture those thoughts so much more effectively. The second step in controlling your thought life is to use your free will to accept the good thoughts and to reject the negative toxic thoughts. Consciously controlling your thought life means not letting thoughts just rampage through your mind. It means engaging interactively with every thought you have and analyzing it before you decide to accept or reject it. In other words, you should never let a thought go unchecked. If it is a good thought, if it is true, pure, lovely, kind, honorable, or worthy of praise, the Bible tells us in Philippians 4 verse 8 to think on these things and fix our minds on them. So accept that thought, purposefully meditate on it, and you will build a good memory that's going to make you healthy. If it is a toxic thought such as fear, anxiety, worry, a low self-esteem, self-hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, jealousy, anger, etc., use your free will to chuck out that thought so that it will literally become hot air. Because if that negative toxic thought gets into your mind through you meditating on it, it's going to grow a thorn tree. Then you are going to have to work that much harder at the process of renewing your mind to get rid of the thorns and build a new memory. Even though you can't always control your circumstances, you can change the way that you react to those circumstances. You can choose to reject toxic thoughts before they make their way into your brain and eventually dominate who you are. Check every thought that comes into your mind and say to yourself, do I want this to be a part of me or not? This is where bringing every thought into captivity becomes important. So the second step in controlling your thought life is to make a conscious decision with your free will to accept or reject a thought. And when you do that, the third step is to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit advising you from your heart. I'd just like to make a point here. The type of sickness or disease that you get depends on the specific type of toxic thorn tree in your brain. In other words, there is a specific toxic thinking pattern behind a specific disease. For example, unforgiveness and bitterness can cause arthritis. Long-term anger, rage and resentment will cause aneurysms, hemorrhoids and varicose veins. Jealousy and envy causes osteoporosis. Fear, anxiety, worry and stress causes high blood pressure, many other heart diseases, many diseases of the gastrointestinal system, and allergies. A low self-esteem and varying degrees of self-hatred and guilt can cause depression, autoimmune diseases, problems with weight gain, and addictions. A combination of fear and a low self-esteem or self-hatred can cause bipolar disorder, strokes, heart attacks, non-bacterial inflammation, gallstones, hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism, to name a few examples. A combination of fear and anxiety plus bitterness and unforgiveness can cause cancer. One of the purposes of my book I have written is to explain the specific toxic thinking pattern behind your specific disease so that you can know what has to be dealt with. The toxic thinking patterns that the medical field has identified as major disease makers is what the Bible calls sin. So the medical field has just proven that most of the time disease is a consequence of sin. But the Bible said that disease is a consequence of sin thousands of years ago. In session 5 I took you on a journey through the Bible where I showed you the connection between sin and disease in Scripture. I also showed you that healing is a promise in the Bible, but as with all God's promises, it comes with a condition, and that is repentance. I also explained that the original Greek word used for repentance in the Bible actually means changing your thinking. So both the Bible and science are saying that you need to change your thinking in order to get well from 87 to 95 percent of diseases. Just as your thought life caused the disease in the first place, you can use your thought life to bring about your healing. I'm talking about how to control your thought life. The first step was understanding how a thought forms and how memory is built in your brain. The second step is using your free will to accept the good thoughts and reject the bad thoughts. 
And when you do that, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit advising you from your heart. The fourth step is deal with that toxic thorn tree in your brain that is causing your disease and build a new healthy memory over it. In session two, I explained that you can change the whole neurochemical structure of your brain through your thought life. You can choose to deal with those toxic thorn trees and build new healthy memories over them. In science, this process is called retranscribing those memories neuroplastically. The Bible calls this renewing the mind. Renewing your mind means changing your thinking to the way that God thinks by meditating on his word. In Romans 12 verse 2 it says, Do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you can prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. In Ephesians 4 verse 23 it says, Be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. God has designed our brain in such a way that we have an amazing ability to renew our minds. In session 2 I explained that when you choose to confront your old toxic thinking habits and recognize how they affect your life, those toxic thoughts are pushed from the non-conscious into your conscious mind. At this point, they enter a labile state, which means that they become unstable and can be altered. This means that while that thought is in your conscious mind, you can do something with it. It can be redesigned and changed, or kept the same and reinforced. In other words, that memory, whether it is healthy or toxic, will either be changed or strengthened. But no thought stays neutral. When it enters your conscious mind, it becomes unstable and is altered in either a positive or negative direction, but it never stays the same. Even if you don't change the content of that thought, new proteins are made through protein synthesis which will strengthen that thought. So the toxic thought can get worse or the good thought can get better. And it is all under your control. You can remove those toxic thorn trees and literally detoxify your brain through changing your thinking. As you change your thinking, some branches on the nerves are removed, the thorns are removed from the thorn tree, new branches form, and the strength of the connections change. Your brain can be reshaped and reformed. It has an incredible capacity to change, rewire, grow and heal. Remember that your thoughts not only remodel the memories in your brain, but your genes as well. You can change and grow your brain at will through thinking, right down to the level of the DNA in your genes. Isn't that amazing? When you have a disease that is traced back to a toxic thinking pattern, you have a toxic thorn tree in your brain that needs to be dealt with. You also need to build a new memory over it by renewing your mind with the Word of God in that area. This means purposefully setting aside time, which I call a thinking time, where you take 10 or 15 minutes every day to just sit and meditate on the right thoughts and renew your mind until you have victory in that area. For example, let's say that you are suffering from depression because of a toxic thinking pattern of a low self-esteem and guilt. Those thoughts keep coming back to your mind and that is dominating. It is a huge thorn tree in your brain. When that thought comes into your mind, you need to consciously capture it. Then you remember how a thought forms and you say to yourself, Okay, I recognize that this is a toxic thought coming from a toxic thorn tree in my brain, but I don't want to think that way anymore. Then you visualize that dark toxic thorn tree in your brain and then you say, All right. I'm going to remove those thorns by using my free will and the help of the Holy Spirit to reject those toxic thoughts from now on. I am also going to build a new memory by spending about 15 minutes every day meditating on what the Word of God has to say about me. 
I am experiencing the symptoms of depression because of a toxic thought pattern of a low self-esteem and guilt. Now I am going to change my thinking so that I see myself the way that God sees me. I am going to build a healthy self-esteem based on who I am in Christ. You then sit down every day in a quiet place, close your eyes, and purposefully and actively start thinking about, meditating on, and speaking the Word of God to yourself. For example, I have great value and worth because of who I am in Christ. God loves me, and He sent His Son to die for me. God accepts and approves of me. Therefore, I accept and approve of myself. I am wearing Jesus' robes of righteousness and his crown of glory and honor on my head. I am a mighty man or a mighty woman of valor, a champion overcoming warrior who possesses dignity and honor. There is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. And the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing power of God is on the inside of me. I am more than a conqueror, and so forth. In session 17, I took you on an in-depth journey through the Bible to show you who you are in Christ. I also wrote a chapter about who you are in Christ in my book, and there are more than 58 scriptures there about what the Word says concerning your value and worth and who you are as a child of God. You need to take some of those scriptures from my book or the scriptures I mentioned in session 17 and actively meditate on them in a thinking time every day until you have renewed your mind and developed a healthy self-esteem based on who you are in Christ. As you are consciously thinking on the word concerning who you are in Christ, chemicals are being released in response to those thoughts that are remodeling the memories in your brain. You are building a new memory which is a healthy lush tree over the old one. That healthy lush tree will then produce chemicals that are healthy for you. What science has shown is that the healthy chemicals released from a lush tree are stronger than the toxic chemicals that are released from the thorn trees. What the healthy chemicals do is they flow through those thorn trees and they remove the toxic thorns that are causing that disease. So as you are consciously thinking on the word, new memories are being built over the old memories. So instead of your brain looking like the picture on the left, it is now looking like the picture on the right. The thorns that were secreting toxic chemicals that were making you sick have been removed and new healthy memories or lush trees are now secreting chemicals that are very good for you. They bring healing and health to your body. These healthy chemicals include chemicals such as serotonin, dopamine, endorphins and encephalins. In our example of depression, when the serotonin is released, the serotonin levels are increased and the symptoms of depression will disappear because depression is caused by a deficiency of serotonin, which, as I mentioned, is caused by thoughts relating to a low self-esteem and guilt. Let's use another example. Let's say you have recurrent infections because of a thought life dominated by fear and anxiety. You have a toxic thorn tree of fear in your brain, which via the hypothalamus has caused a cascade of chemical and hormonal reactions in stage 2 and 3 of stress that has led to excessive quantities of the stress hormone cortisol in your blood. When cortisol is present in high quantities for a long time, it destroys the cells of the immune system. Your weakened immune system has now left you with no defense against bacteria, parasites and fungus, which are then able to infect your body. You now recognize how your toxic thinking habit of fear and anxiety has affected your body and you say, These fearful thoughts have come from a toxic thorn tree in my brain, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, I am not going to think that way anymore. I am going to remove those thorns by using my free will to reject those toxic thoughts of fear and anxiety from now on. I am also going to build a new memory by spending about 15 minutes every day meditating on scriptures from the Word of God in this area. I explained to you how to deal with fear, anxiety and stress in session 19. I have also written a chapter on that in my book, which is full of scriptures that are relevant to dealing with fear, anxiety and stress. 
So you need to take some of those scriptures and spend time every day meditating on them. And as you consciously meditate on the Word of God and you replace those thoughts of fear and anxiety with a new thinking habit of casting your cares, trusting in the Lord and receiving the Father's love, you are remodeling the memories in your brain. The thorns are being removed from those toxic thorn trees of fear and you are building a new memory which is a healthy lush tree over the old one. The lush trees will secrete chemicals that cause the hypothalamus to respond by producing the correct formula of hormones and the excessive production of cortisol by the adrenal glands will stop. The cortisol levels normalize and the cells of the immune system are now able to remultiply and come back to full strength. The immune system is now able to kill the bacteria, viruses and fungus and parasites and the infection resolves and your body heals. But it all starts with your thought life. I said earlier that just as your thought life caused the disease in the first place, you can use your thought life to bring about your healing. Healing is not a one-way street where you sit back and expect God to do it all. God has given you a phenomenal brain and a very powerful mind, so use it on purpose to your advantage. Just as you should have quiet times every day where you fellowship with God through prayer and worship, you also need to set aside time to sit and renew your mind by purposefully meditating on the Word. This is what I call that 10 or 15 minute thinking time. A thinking time is especially important when you have a toxic thinking habit to overcome, such as depression or any other disease that is traced back to your thought life where there are toxic thorn trees in your brain. You cannot randomly do this once in a while. You need to literally make this an event or an exercise. You actually need to sit down somewhere and actively meditate on positive thoughts, ideally from the Word of God, and consciously build a new memory over the old one. Furthermore, you must understand that you can't do this exercise of thinking right thoughts once and then expect everything to be fine. According to research conducted by Dr. Caroline Leaf, it takes about four days of thinking correctly to remove those thorns from that toxic memory and another 21 days to build a new memory over it. Repetition at frequently spaced intervals is necessary to consolidate and stabilize those new healthy memories so that they become permanently a part of you. Change will happen in your brain as soon as you start the process. Within four days, you will feel the effects of changed thinking. Within 21 days, you will have built a whole new memory and thought pattern in your brain. The first four days will be the most difficult. The fifth to the 21st days will become easier as you progress. And by the 21st day, you will feel a significant change. Even though you feel a significant change after 21 days, you will still need to continue practicing your new thought pattern. Now, when I talk about four days or 21 days, I'm speaking from a medical point of view in terms of the science of how the brain works. But with God in the equation, it is not that predictable. For example, to my surprise, some people have been instantly healed as soon as they repented for the sin or toxic mindset behind their disease. Now that is a miracle, because even when um, you change your thinking on a physical level, the human body can't naturally recover that fast. I saw two ladies get completely healed of allergies immediately after dealing with their broken heart and releasing and forgiving the person who had hurt them. God intervened and the person was healed instantly. Others, including myself, have taken longer than 21 days. We gradually recovered as we had to persevere through the process of renewing our minds. So God heals every person in a unique and individual way according to the work that he wants to do in that person's heart. In that 15 minutes of thinking time, journalize your thoughts if you think that that will help you because journaling apparently works incredibly well. The research done by Dr. Caroline Leaf has found that journaling or writing your thoughts down or even drawing pictures of your thoughts is an excellent way of renewing your mind and building healthy memories. 
The point is, is that you need to get very, very interactive and personally involved with the process. You can't be passive. You need to take responsibility and control your health and your thought life. As well as spending 10 to 15 minutes every day purposefully thinking on the word concerning the area you have big issues with, you also need to be careful to bring every thought captive during the rest of the day. It is no good meditating on the word for 15 minutes in the morning and then spending the rest of the day with fear, anxiety and stress going wild in your thought life. You have to constantly choose to use this process of rejecting the wrong thoughts and deciding to think on the right thoughts. Constantly check your thought life. Never let any thought go roaming through your brain unchecked. There are many thoughts that are constantly coming to you from the external world and much of the time it is the devil putting rubbish in your head. So if the Holy Spirit convicts you and you find yourself thinking, for goodness sake, why am I thinking that? Capture that thought immediately. Say, great, thank you, Lord. Then you repent and get rid of that thought before it becomes a toxic stronghold in your brain. What I am emphasizing to you is to be aware of what is going on inside your mind on a constant basis all the time. If a thought comes from the inside, it could really be the Holy Spirit revealing things to you that you need to get rid of to bring down those toxic strongholds. If the thought is coming from the outside, for example from the media, do you really want that in your head? Get rid of it, because once it's in your head, you've got to work that much harder to get it out of your brain. It is much easier to reject bad thoughts immediately than to have to go through the whole process of having to remove those thorns from that thorn tree through a 15 minute thinking time every day. So it's a constant process of being aware of what thoughts are going through your mind all the time, as well as taking the big issues in your life and sitting down and actually consciously working through those toxic strongholds. Changing your thinking and renewing your mind, as I said, is a constant interactive process, and the best way to do it is with someone else. If you've got a lot of issues, and we all have, one of the best ways of dealing with this is to partner with someone, such as your spouse or your friend. Teach your whole family. Work through this process with people that you trust and that can help you to actually talk and walk you through this process. I said in session two that it takes a lot of discipline to be aware of your thought life. As you start this process, you're going to be amazed at how lazy you've actually been when it comes to your thought life. We're incredibly lazy. We just let whatever toxic thought pops up roam around in our head and then we wonder why we are sick. Meanwhile, if we would control our thoughts, we would be so much healthier and feel so much better. Getting rid of toxic thoughts not only causes you to become more physically healthy, but you become more intelligent as well. This is the largest part of the research that Dr. Caroline Leaf did, which proved that your intelligence increases with a positive thought life. So we've come to the end of the first principle that you need to apply to detox your brain, and that is to control your thought life. You control your thought life by first understanding how a thought forms and how memory is built in your brain. When you have a good understanding of how your brain works and can visualize it, you can control your thought life so much better. The second step is to use your free will to accept the good thoughts and to reject the bad thoughts so that they become hot air and do not penetrate your mind and brain any further. When you are making a decision with your free will, the third step is to listen to the Holy Spirit advising you from your heart. Lastly, the fourth step in controlling your thought life is to deal with your toxic thinking patterns and build a new healthy memory over it. When you take every thought captive during the day and spend some thinking time meditating on the Word of God in the area you have problems, the toxic thorn trees, which are illustrated in the picture on the screen on the left, will be broken down and you will build a new positive memory over it, as shown in the picture on the right. So renewing your mind is a physical process as much as it is a mental and spiritual process. 
God said in Joshua 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will deal wisely and have good success. Controlling your thought life is only possible by God's grace and the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot change yourself in your own strength and ability. You will only end up frustrated, defeated and disappointed. You have got to rely on the Holy Spirit's help and God's grace. God's grace is His power and ability that He gives you to enable you to change and to do what He's called you to do. Relying on God's grace means not doing anything without first asking for His help, because without Him, we can do nothing. His grace will help you to overcome sinful thinking. So the first principle that you need to apply to detox your brain is to control your thought life. You need to start capturing your thoughts and changing your brain through the renewing of your mind with the Word of God. You can change those thoughts your mind is fully under your control. The second principle is use your words to shape your world. Our discussion on controlling your thought life and the impact that your thoughts have on your health would not be complete without talking about the words that arise from your thoughts. In Matthew 12 verse 34 it says, Out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks. What you are saying is coming from somewhere. Check your thought life. If you permit toxic thoughts to fill your mind, you will ultimately speak them with negative results in your life and health. Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for life or death. In session 17, I said, be careful what you say about yourself, because you are today what you said about yourself yesterday. Your words are electromagnetic life forces that shape your world because they have creative ability. What you confess over yourself is what you, become, what you will become. What you confess over your life is what your life will become. You must never underestimate the power of your words. Your thoughts and ultimately your words are seeds. They are containers of power. They will produce a harvest of either blessing and health or sickness and destruction. You choose. Watch what you say because you get what you say. You need to be as consciously aware of what you are saying as you need to be consciously aware of what you are thinking. We all tend to speak without thinking. As we consciously control what we think, we need to learn to think things through with our free will and our prefrontal cortex, which is our rational decision maker, before we just blurt things out. I had a professor at medical school who always used to say, engage brain before acceleration with tongue. Before you say something, think to yourself. When I sow these words by speaking them, will it produce a harvest that I want to reap in my life? Or will I regret my words? Remember in Matthew 12 verse 36 it says that one day we are going to have to give an account for every idle word that we have spoken. Your words not only affect you, but also those who hear you. This is both a biblical and scientific principle. We need to have an increased awareness of the input that we have in other people's lives. Make sure that the impact you have on them with your words is one to be proud of. Now you may be in a place where you have been hurt and you may think that you will feel better if you get those angry negative words off your chest by giving that person a piece of your mind. However, the truth is you won't feel better. It is shown very clearly in both science and the word of God that nothing good comes out of negative words. Negative words can be more dangerous to you than the person you are saying them to. Remember, to speak those toxic words, a toxic thought had to first form in your mind, and as you meditated on it, you grew a toxic thorn tree in your brain. Furthermore, when you speak, you hear the words you say. 
That information goes back into your brain through your ears and it goes through the whole thinking process again. So you are reinforcing that toxic thorn tree in your brain and making it stronger by growing more branches and more thorns. As you make negative statements, toxic chemicals are released from those thorn trees which put your body into a toxic state of stress. If the stress chemicals flow in your brain for longer than 30 seconds, your thinking, intelligence and most of the organ systems in your body are affected in a harmful way. When you make positive statements, you build healthy lush trees which are good memories in your brain, which will release positive chemicals that are healthy for you. So choose your words with care because they either kill or give life. It is all up to you. There are computer imaging techniques that have been able to measure and picture the sound waves of the words that we speak. They have shown that when you speak negative words, it has a very sharp kind of waveform that tends to go out and attract negative. This is not a weird New Age philosophy, this is reality. It is a solid scientific and biblical principle. It is like unto like. What you think and speak is what you get. Your thoughts and your words work hand in hand to influence the world around you and what you become. Proverbs 23 verse 7 has also been a key scripture in our teaching. As a man thinks in his heart, so does he become. When you speak love and faith, they have shown that these words have a different type of waveform which attracts love and faith. We all know that it is unpleasant being around people that are always negative, grumbling and complaining. But it's nice to be around people that are happy, fun and who have positive things to say about life. They draw you to them. It is not just because they are nice. There is actually a physical, electrochemical reaction that is occurring that is drawing you to them. Do you speak about my arthritis? my heart problem, my depression. If you do this, you have taken ownership of something. You've taken it into your spirit and you've made it a part of you and that is not good. If you happen to have something wrong with you, it is a problem that is there that you need to deal with, but it's not yours. So you can say I'm suffering from the symptoms of arthritis, but it's not my arthritis. The minute you my it, you are taking ownership of it and you literally change the neurochemical structure of the way in which your body functions. Let me give you a stronger example of this. When you are married and you are having a physical relationship with your husband or wife, you have a neurochemical bonding that is taking place. In other words, you imprint onto each other's brains. There is a neurochemical bond or a neurochemical glue that is taking place so that when separation occurs between a husband and wife, for example, a divorce or a death, there is a physical pain because that bond is still there and it takes time to dissolve. In other words, neurochemical reactions and bonding in bodies are actually real. And in the same way that you take your husband or your wife or your children or your friends into your heart and brain neurochemically, you do the same thing with an illness. This especially applies to people who have had an illness for a long time. They are so used to it that it is a part of them and they don't know how to live life without it. If you take ownership of that illness, then you take it in and it forms a chemical bond that changes the whole neurochemical circuitry in your brain. If you say my disease, you are going to imprint it into your body so that it is very hard to break with it. You almost want to keep it, so you have to be very careful of taking ownership of negative things. Watch what you say about your children or what you say to your spouse. If you say, oh, you are always not listening to me, or you are always late, or you are so naughty, you are actually imprinting that into their mind and shaping their world. You are saying that's who they are. Especially be careful with children. Remember that they are small. Their brain is immature. It's developing. It's vulnerable and it's sensitive. What you pack in is going to set the stage for adulthood. I'd like to give you some parenting advice. I have not been a parent myself yet, 
but I'm speaking from the experience of my own childhood. I had a Greek grandfather called Stavros Giorgio. He believed that you put two rings on your children's fingers that nobody can ever take off, and that is the ring of confidence and the ring of education. When I was a young child between the ages of two and nine years old, at every possible opportunity he praised me. He constantly told me how clever I was and how everything I would put my hand to would be a success. He so drummed that into my head that by the age of about six years old, I really did believe that I was extremely clever and that I was the cleverest child in my school. It wasn't that I was proud or full of myself in a negative sense. It was just that that is what had been spoken over me so much that that is what I believed and that is exactly what I became. I excelled at school. I came top of my class academically and was the captain of almost every sports team. Now, I'm not explaining this to blow my own trumpet. I'm just illustrating the importance of what you speak into your children's lives. What you speak into your children's lives in childhood sets the stage for who they are going to become in adulthood. As parents, we make mistakes all the time. So please do not allow yourself to feel condemned. My intention is simply to make you aware of where you are going wrong because it is not too late to fix your mistakes. The beauty with a child's brain is that sorry is the most incredible thing. When you've made a mess, all you have to do is say sorry to your children. I'm sorry. I really was wrong. I didn't mean to snap at you. I didn't mean to do this. Can you please forgive me? When you give them a love and a hug, you have wiped out that negative memory and you've taken those thorns off that thorn tree. And there is now a beautiful memory over it which says, Mum loves me, Dad loves me, and they've forgiven me. A child's brain is more vulnerable, but it also heals quicker. We can undo a lot of our mistakes with our children through love and simply saying sorry. Apologizing is a humbling experience, but it is good for our character. Are you saying one thing but thinking another thing in your heart? For example, you can be acting polite and saying something complimentary to a person, while in your heart you are thinking insulting thoughts towards them. Did you know that thinking one thing while saying another thing is toxic to your body? Your words have to be backed up with honesty. In science they call this integrity. What you do and say on the outside must reflect what you think on the inside. A lack of integrity between what you are thinking and what you are saying will upset the whole chemical balance and feedback systems in your body. It also affects the way that information is processed and memories are built in your brain. It causes a blockage in the flow of chemicals that will actually put your body into a toxic state of illness. So it is not just enough to say the right thing, you also have to think the right thing. Otherwise, you are lying, and lying makes you sick, believe it or not. When you are born again, you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. But if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you are not born again. You also have to believe it in your heart. And it is the same thing with what you speak every day. Your body has been designed electrochemically with feedback mechanisms that will only flow properly when there is integrity between what you think and what you say. In other words, your mouth and mind must line up so that your body can function smoothly and be in good health. When they don't line up because you are speaking one thing while thinking another, your functioning is going to be impaired and you'll eventually get sick. If your mouth, your mind and your heart are working together, your heart will secrete the peace chemical called A and F and you will make good decisions. You'll find yourself calming down, thinking clearly and functioning rationally. We are on the second principle of how to detox your brain and pull down those toxic thorn trees that are making you sick. And that is that you must shape your world with your words. You can purposefully use your words to your advantage to shape your world in a positive way. 
I've said previously, and I'll say it again, that the name it and claim it teaching of many modern churches today is not scriptural because it tends towards materialism, and I hope not to increase that image. However, I do believe in speaking the word of God over your life to help you gain victory in an area where your mind needs to be renewed. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The first principle in breaking down the toxic thorn trees in your brain was to control your thought life and renew your mind by meditating on the word of God in what I called a thinking time. However, based on how the brain works, I can also tell you that if you speak out the word of God during that thinking time, you will renew your mind three times quicker. Because when you speak out the word of God, you hear what you say, and that information goes back into your brain through your ears and through the whole thinking process again. This reinforces the new healthy memories that you are building in your brain by growing more branches and making the connections between the branches stronger. One practical suggestion on how to shape your world with your words during your thinking time is a faith confession. For example, in my book I have included a faith confession which has several scriptures about who you are in Christ and I also read that out aloud to you in session 17. This is for people who are suffering from a disease that is a result of a low self-esteem, self-hatred, self-rejection, guilt and condemnation. Similarly, for people with diseases coming from fear, anxiety and stress, I also wrote out a faith confession in my book that has relevant scriptures about dealing with fear, anxiety and stress, and I went through it with you in session 19. Speaking those scriptures out loud to yourself on a daily basis is a very effective way to help you overcome those mental strongholds, renew your mind and build a new, healthy lush tree in your brain. This is how you can purposefully use your words to bring life and help your body heal. One of your most powerful weapons to defeat the enemy is to speak out the word of God. Remember my quote from Joyce Meyer, You cannot defeat Goliath with your mouth shut. Here is another key scripture in our teaching which is Hebrews 4 verse 12 that says, The word that God speaks is alive and full of power making it active, operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God is a powerful two-edged sword that we can use in spiritual warfare to defeat the enemy in our lives. I explained previously that a sword left in its sheath is not effective in battle. It is only useful and of value to you when you take it out and actually use it. In the same way, the Bible on the shelf is not going to do anything for you. Its power is only released in your life when you speak it in faith. I have applied this to my personal life for years and have always reaped the benefits of it. Every morning I speak out a faith confession concerning areas of my life that I am having a problem with or that needs to be overcome as well as what I am believing God for. For example, there was a period in my life where I had a low self-esteem. So daily I spoke out the faith confession that we went through in session 17 until I overcame that toxic thinking habit. At the moment I am studying for my American medical licensing exams. This involves restudying the whole six years of my medical training at university all over again in one and a half years. For me this is a potentially very psychologically daunting task. I am putting in 12 to 14 hours of study in a day. But every morning before I begin, this is what I speak over myself. Father, I am who you say I am. I can do what you say I can do. I am a victorious overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. I am a mighty woman of valor, a champion overcoming warrior who possesses dignity and honor. All circumstances are under my feet. Everything I put my hand to prospers. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. And the immeasurable, unlimited and surpassing power of God is on the inside of me. Through my union with God, I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. 
I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. God has given me wisdom and I have the mind of Christ. So today my studying will be efficient and effective. I will have a 100% accurate supernatural recall of the work I study in my exams. As Daniel asked for supernatural recall of the scriptures in the Old Testament. Father, I give you thanks and praise, for in all things you lead me to triumph in Christ. Therefore, on the authority of your word, and in the name of Jesus, I claim and I declare surpassing victory in my studying and in my American exams. I encourage you to do the same thing. Purposefully use your words to shape your world. If you are sick, you need to speak over your life. I thank you, Lord, for my healing. By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Lord, I thank you that you forgive me of all my iniquities and heal every single one of my diseases. I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, with long life will God satisfy me and show me his salvation. I prosper and enjoy good health, even as my soul prospers. Every cell in my body is healed and healthy. That's how you need to start talking. Proverbs 16 verse 24 says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the mind and healing to the body. Remember, as a believer, you have been given authority to speak things into being in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 21, it says that Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith, a firm relying trust, and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Speak healing to your body in the name of Jesus. If there are organs or nerve tissue that does not regenerate, speak a creative miracle to those tissues in the name of Jesus. For example, if your back was damaged by trauma, every time you think of it, speak healing into your back by saying, the nerves, bones and discs in my spine are healed and made whole. They are functioning exactly as they were designed to. I thank you, Father, for a creative miracle and a totally new spine in the name of Jesus. If you have an underactive thyroid, speak your healing. Say, I command my thyroid to be made whole and perfect and to function as God created it to from before the foundation of the world. Whatever that part of your body is that is not functioning properly, every time you think of it, speak to it and command it to be healed and to function as God designed it to. The first principle was controlling your thought life. The second principle is shaping your world with your words. So I've linked the spoken word to your thought life. What you are speaking will reflect what is in your thought life. These two principles work closely together. Coming back to Proverbs 18 verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge in it will eat the fruit of it for life or death. Use your thoughts and your words to your advantage. Indulge in your tongue by speaking the word over you so that you will eat the fruit of life. And you are the God